Now, this is a story that sort of interlinks some of the stories that I've been doing on. Um, we'll pull it up on the screen here from Press Progress. And it says, Canada's unions are organizing to defend workers from far right, anti 2 LGBTQ. you know where I'm going, hate groups. Okay, so right there, it's fully loaded. I mean, if you're just reading this article and you're not really following what's actually happening at these protests, what people are actually protesting at drag queen story times or the sexually explicit books, and you read something like that, you think, oh my gosh, it's so bad that unions have to be involved. Um, but lately I've been tackling reports where these unions are full of crap, to be honest. But let's continue with the article. It says the Canadian Labour Congress has launched an emergency task force to address escalating anti LGBTQ plus hate as unions across Canada begin mobilizing to defend queer and trans people in workplaces and beyond. Union, unionized workplaces such as libraries and schools have become battlegrounds in far-right attacks against queer and trans people across the country. Again, the average person reading this is going to take this at face value. Uh, they mention unionized workplaces. Those are also publicly funded workplaces. If you are using public funds for things that many in the public find to be not just inappropriate, but an attack against children's innocence, they may be protesting. And the attacks, as you know, um, in my opinion, every single one I've covered, anybody opposing these uh, so-called events has been very peaceful. What's your thoughts on that? Well, first of all, you're right. Everybody who did go against the, these like uh, insane ideology of always being peaceful. They always use word for expressing their disagreement of sexualization and indoctrination of these children. The thing is, when you look at the title, you can see that this is coming from the left. Why? Because it's not only the right wing people who are against mm -hmm. that. It's every single person who are against and children who are against that. There are people from the left, the people from the right, from people from the mm -hmm. middle. This is yeah. not a political side. This is people who want to protect children. And also the people who are against that are not anti-LGBTQ2S plus whatever the um, alphabet that's coming from after. This is the people some of the people are in the community. Some of the people who have family that is on the community, the only thing that they are against it, it's what is going on with the children. Don't touch the children. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you will not have the backlash that we see. That's it. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you said that because that's what's so concerning about this. Look what is happening into response to peaceful public protests on this issue. You're right. It's not being met by conversation. It's being vilified as hate to the point that unions are coming together. And that brings me to my next point, which is, well, what does that look like? So recently I've covered um, uh, two stories. They were connected to the drag camp that took place. I know, I can't believe it. A drag camp for children as young as seven years old took place at the Carousel Theater in Granville Island. Now, what through a couple of the reports I've done, I've let the public know that one of the, the unions you see at the front of this um, union, IATSE 118, which is at the top of this article we just read from, uh, they basically told the public that there had been threats of violence towards the theater, uh, which, of course, has some of their members. And for that reason, threats of violence, threats to property. And for that reason, they needed to summon people to come out and defend people. I don't know if we have a clip of how aggressive uh, the people who showed up versus the people who came to protest. Um, it was really bad. They were calling me a Nazi. Never in my life what? did I ever expect to be called a Nazi. I don't even think they can see me because the union's coming ahead with these, I would call them lies. And the reason why I call them lies is because I contacted the Vancouver Police Department. Now, if your staff is being threatened with violence, the first thing you do is contact the Vancouver police, right? If there's an event coming in, you're getting threats of violence. The Vancouver police had zero of these such threats. And um, do we have a clip? 
of, of uh, I think this is a clip where I'm throwing back how the mainstream media parroted their claims on this, but I did a follow-up clip because not only were the, the small group of people, by the way, I would say there was about seven people too were members of the LGBTQ community that came to protest. Um, I'm just going to stop. This is a gentleman just walking by the union's uh, mob clad in mob rainbow clad and he, they're stopping him, harassing him. I speak to him there. But um, I followed up because two of the people who attended the small protest against there while they were protesting there, despite parking apart from each other, they ended up having both of their tire walls slashed and they weren't parked near each other. So they believe they were targeted as well by that counter protest that was organized by the union. So is this what we're going to expect now every time there's a protest near a, you know, drag event for oh children? My God. Yeah. The car. It, what? It, it's, it's, I think it's a tactic huh? to just like, like performing like, car will like I saw that too in Montreal like the it's like a tactic to just like target cars and mm -hmm. I don't know why because if you are really for the environment you know that the wheel of a car it's really bad to make it another new one yeah. on the car because it's so bad to because what you do with the wheel is like couch you like what you are doing with it like And mm -hmm. you know that this is the more like on environmental like action you can take. <laughs> yeah. You know what? We can only have so many tire swings at a park. You're right. But you're right. It's really, it's gotten to the point that in Vancouver, there was a story where during a freedom convoy recently, um, there were people in masks with the rainbow stuff and they threw paint over a convoy that was driving at a legal rate um, and damaged quite a few, a couple of vehicles, quite um, a lot. One had close to a hundred thousand in damage on her huge truck, but it's a safety concern because if you get the paint in the wrong spot and they're swerving. So anyways, it's, it's concerning to see these unions coming out saying, uh, you know, these trigger words like attacks when really they just mean peaceful protests and emails and petitions. Um, and then using that as an excuse, I, it is concerning. We'll see where this goes. Um, But apparently this is Canada-wide that they are mobilizing this. And how terrifying for the members. If you're an LGBTQ member and your union is telling you you're you're this ups uh, unsafe, if you believe that, that's quite frightening. But my point is, is like the people who are for the drag queen and all these nonsense ideology, we see that they are coming from the extreme far left. The mm -hmm. people who most of the time are aggressive, who doesn't want to talk, who cannot talk or cannot express what they really feel or anything. They use the emotion and they use violence and aggressivity. And, and, and when we see the people who are against it, who just want to protect the people or the, just the normal population, like the normal like parents and normal people who just want the best for their children and just want the children to be kids and mm -hmm. just being, being teach the normal topic in, in school. But the thing is like the society, give the far left so mm -hmm. much space and they give them like the... Um, I almost like the like the rights to do it and the rights to to use violence and the rights to to aggress people in the street and everything because the society think that the place is more for them than the, just the normal population. This is my mm. biggest concern on, on what is going on. Why are we giving them as much space as that when just the normal population doesn't have any almost. That's a clip from something we call Rebel News Daily. It's our daily live stream hosted by my friend David Menzies, but the show also includes a rotating cast of hosts and special guests, including me. It's a great way for us to talk about the news of the day as the news is happening in an unscripted fashion, and it's an awesome way for you to interact with us as well. We stream every weekday, 1 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Mountain, wherever you find Rebel News. See you there.